<laughs> yes. Oh, 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 what a shot. We need some more Winterberg dominance here. <laughs> oh, nice serve. Oh, now he's okay. Now you've talked enough. He's coming at you. Financial technology is getting a lot of attention today, but behind every technology story are people working hard to help advisors build a better business. We're traveling across the country to meet those people and learn why they are dedicated to the success of advisors. These are the innovators. These are their stories. This is FPPAD Tech Tour. FPPAD Tech Tour is brought to you by Backstage Sponsors, InvestNet Tamarack, Orion Advisor Services, and Redtail Technology. With additional support provided by these roadie sponsors. Our first stop on FBPAT Tech Tour is in Charlotte, North Carolina, where we met up with Victor Fetter, CIO of LPL Financial, to learn about what attracted him to manage LPL's technology solutions for the nation's largest independent broker-dealer. So Victor, you've lived a lot of places as I've learned more about you. How did you get from all those places and most recently Austin here to Charlotte? Yeah, we have lived in quite a few places. Um, when I look at my, through my career, I started out as a technician, a programmer, working for EDS in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, and since that time, I ended up in Chicago and London, back to Chicago, Austin, and now Charlotte. Um, the move from Austin to Charlotte uh, was because I got the opportunity to join LPL Financial. I moved from working for Dell Computer, where I ran all of online, to come work for LPL Financial, mainly because I fell in love with the mission of what the company uh, does for independent advisors and what we do about giving advice to investors. I never dreamed I'd be moving from high tech, manufacturing, online e-commerce to financial services, but it's been an interesting journey. So when I think about Dell, when I think about computers that they sell to end, to end retail customers, yeah. how has that transition been? going to an environment that's based in financial services. Now you have advisors as your customers. They're not like retail computer purchasers. What have you learned through that transition? Technology is technology. I mean, you look at the principles of good data, good user experiences, good security. Those are all gonna be the same, whether I'm working in a financial services or selling computers in Malaysia. But then you think about the differences, high tech, computers, personal devices, high-end storage and enterprise systems to financial advice. That's a little different. You know, when you look at the financial services, a highly regulated environment. Yep. Different standards need to be upheld. That's different than working in the computer space. I am also thinking about the retail purchasers of computers. I think the demands on that may not be as intense as they are from advisors. I'm thinking about LPL Financial tens of thousands of advisors, 14, 13, 14,000. They're all independently minded entrepreneurs and they all want to run their business their way. Yeah. What have you learned through that experience? How do you adjust to all their individual demands, but yet yeah. you'll roll out some good culture and good experiences for the people that, that you've hired and that you've organized to help advisors. Well, there are there are some similarities. If you go back to that experience at Dell that you referenced, you know, when you're running online commerce for 130 something countries around the world, you have that diversity of need and requirement. One of the things that we've learned and I picked up from that experience is you got to listen. And when you think about what we've been doing at LPL, we've been listening. Uh, we spend thousands of hours a year going out to advisors' offices and hearing what they love about technology, where they need help in being more efficient in their business operations. How can they grow differently? And so that listening attribute, that collaboration attribute is of the utmost importance. And I think coming into this environment, that's helped me learn a lot in a relatively short period of time. It's because I've learned the business through immersion. You know, I've gone and heard and seen and witnessed and experienced what it's like to be in those offices, listening to those conversations they're having with their investors. Separately, um, I went and actually got my licenses, trying to understand what's behind the regulations, trying to understand how we operate in this space and do it really well. So you put yourself in the shoes of the advisors that you serve. Not only myself, but our entire team. When you think about the organization that we've built, uh, we've been sending our team members out to those offices. We've been encouraging our executives to go through some of the training around what does it take to be an advisor so that they have that appreciation around uh, what are the pains, the struggles, and the opportunities that exist in those offices. Now you told me about putting yourself in the shoes of advisors. I have to be convinced 
that advisors are vocal. So what are some of those fun exchanges like when you're communicating with advisors about how they want to run their business and how they think you should be running the business? You know, one of the things I've learned that they respect is candid conversations. I mean, we could always have the, the message, um, but having that conversation around what's really working and not working is important. And sometimes we have different points of view and I don't mind sharing how my points of view are different from their points of view. I think the, the flip side is we always try to make sure that our advisors are maximizing the technology that's available. And we don't find that happening a lot. You know, I almost see two extremes. Oftentimes we find many organizations aren't using the simple stuff that's out there that could really help their business grow. On the flip side, you have advisors who are on the verge of being CTOs. You know, if you look at this space, there have been so many startups, providers, vendors, solutions that are out there, and we leave it to advisors to integrate all that. And I'm not sure that's a good strategy. Advisors need to go deliver financial advice, not be technologists. And so one of the things that we're trying to do at LPL is, is put that ecosystem together to figure out what is the right combination of tools to help them grow, um, and that's really the power, right? And so those conversations that we have is about the realism of what we're using, why is it out there, how are we thinking about it, where are we going, and encouraging them to use it to their advantage. So you have a few years under your belt as CIO for LPL. Yeah. What's your habit like? What's a typical day that you operate? What, what do you do on those typical days for LPL? Yeah, so on most days, I usually wake up about five o'clock in the morning. I start out the day uh, going through and cleaning up email and things that are happening overnight or whatever the case may be. So my team often jokes that they get the early morning emails from Victor. Uh, from there, I make my way. I usually work out in the mornings. And that takes me and puts me on the road to the office around 7 o'clock in the morning, give or take, in the office around 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, and from there, we spend time uh, with the team spend time talking with advisors. Uh, that could be uh, just checking in and seeing how they're doing, either on certain projects or certain advisor offices. Um, we spend time in uh, recruiting, helping uh, new advisors come onto our platform and take advantage of everything LPL has to offer. My day typically wraps up from the office around six o'clock, home with the family for dinner, and then, then I'm back to uh, looking at what's getting lined up for the next day. Yeah. Are there any late night emails from Victor Fetter that people worry about? Yeah, not, not so much. Not so much in the late night because um, I, I go to bed early. I, you know, I, go, I usually am in bed by 9, 10 o'clock each night. So that's a little bit of our secret here, right? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. You're super productive in the morning. Yeah. You get the blood flowing. Yeah. Are you also, are you calling advisors directly one-on-one -on -one in some of oh, those meetings? Absolutely. Yeah, so we're always on the phone and I find myself talking frequently. I don't, there's not a day that doesn't go by where I'm not talking to an advisor. So either through that kind of dialogue, set discussions that we have where they're coming into the offices or I'm going out to their offices um, through social media and engaging with advisors that way. Um, you know, one of the things that I like to do is be accessible. And so I always, you know, tell our advisors, if you have a question, email me, call me, and we'll go ahead and um, connect you to the right people if I can't help uh, directly. When I'm on the road, um, I make it a point to have those connections. So I could be visiting technology vendors in a major city and, and we'll set up a dinner you know, with six, seven, eight advisors and have them come and, and just share with us what's going on in their businesses and I can share with them what's going on with us at LPL and how we're bringing technology solutions to bear. So part of my job on FPPAD Tech Tour is capturing the stories of people that are helping advisors build a better business with technology. Yeah. Where I really want to go is I was looking at your Twitter feed to see things about your personal side, about the time you spend with your family and your kids, the soccer games that you go to. Yeah. I think you hosted a ton of middle schoolers in we your do. house recently. Yeah. But for advisors and anyone who is watching the Twitter profile, there might be something that they don't see yeah. on there. What is one of those secrets or things that Secret. someone doesn't necessarily <laughs> know about? Well, you know, I have four kids, and as you've outlined, um, very active in the community, and we open our home to lots of different vehicles for engaging with uh, kids. And maybe that doesn't come through maybe the social profile as much as, uh, as I would like, but I have a passion uh, for kids. And there's just two words there, passion. One is if you're fetter, you're passionate about what you do. And so whether it be gymnastics or soccer or whatever it is, we encourage our kids to go all in. And I, that comes in through the work environment as well. It's just, how do you go all in? You know, we, we talk a little bit about how I engage with advisors. That's going all in. When we talk about delivering solutions to our advisors, it's going all in. I, I think the other is, is kids. 
You know, one of the things that I love doing is giving kids a chance. Um, I think oftentimes in this world, it's a challenging world, and there's lots of distractions and there are lots of things that are out there. And so one of the things that Heather, my wife, and I do a lot is spend time with kids. Um, and that is just to give them a foundation, a foundation of values for those kids that don't have a chance, those kids that have been abused. We want to help them. We want to give them some support as they go through those challenging times. And so uh, passion and kids are probably two things that may not come through when you read about digital leadership, innovation, et cetera, uh, through the social profiles. So how many dozens of middle schoolers were here inside? So um, in our basement, typically on a Monday night during the school year, you'll get 110 middle schooler or high school uh, students uh, participating in Young Life. Um, and, and that's a group that Heather and I have supported and we've opened our doors uh, to Young Life. And so Monday nights is Young Life. Um, we also have the, the church uh, youth group that meets here regularly. So uh, just the other night we had about 50 students uh, from the church hanging out here. They come out once a week. Um, I mean, they also uh, have fun in the basement, they have fun by the pool, uh, whatever the case may be. I would say 50 to 110 middle <laughs> schoolers. You're definitely yeah. going all in uh, with, you have to with do it. kids and young adults. Yeah. yeah, passion is the word. So one of the elephants in the room in financial services right now is the threat or opportunity. Now threat might be my word, right. opportunity might be my word mm -hmm. of the automated investment services. Mm -hmm. Some advisors might fear that they're going to take business away from advisors. Some advisors are looking to add these in their, their business. What's your take, what's your attitude on these automated investment services? Yes. You know, I think they serve a purpose, but I think the power of independent advice is real. Um, and you need to have that advice in person. People want to understand your goals, your aspirations, et cetera. I mean, I, I love the New York Stock Exchange recently had an issue, and I saw a tweet that someone said, the stock exchange is down, has your robo-advisor called you? And I think that's the reality of the world that we're in. That says you want to have those touch points with someone that's really being a steward of where you're going. Having said that, I think the power of the robo space is the use of technology in very different ways. And so from my perspective, I think there's power in advice, face-to-face -face advice. I think there's power in technology. What we want to do is take the technology of automated advice, the technology of those, those rich portfolios, the power of the economics that comes with it, and give it to the advisors. And let them be able to provide a more powerful experience to the investors that they serve. So what are you telling advisors? Are you telling them to ignore this or are you telling them to embrace this? So, so we're talking to advisors in a couple different areas. One is we're giving them tools so they can enter into that space. And so from that perspective, we're saying, you know what, you may have a certain segment of clients that it makes sense for you to go and have those types of capabilities. On the flip side, we're also saying, let's just be cautious. Let's be aware of what's going on and don't really forsake the values that you put in your business and make sure that you're having those conversations with those investors that need it most. Now when you talk about paying attention to what's going on, I want to know where are you getting your sources of news? Where are you getting your sources of information? Because I, I understand LPL must put a lot of faith and trust in you as CIO to make sure that you know where the needle is going, you know where the not where the future is going, yeah. but at least you have your finger on the pulse. So where are you getting your there's information? A, there's a couple of different ways that I get information. One is um, I read a lot. And so through the social media, I can get access to articles and news and things that are happening in the space and in the industry. You're reading FP Pad, right? Of course, absolutely. <laughs> Watching those videos. Yes, absolutely. I, I think the other is really listening to advisors. Those conversations we have with advisors, our, our group is not shy. We engage in those dialogues and we love when an advisor says, hey, Victor, have you seen X? Are you familiar with product Y? What about this idea? And so those conversations are helpful. And then my team and I, we spend a lot of time listening through conferences and other pieces. I think the key for us is we just don't go to the standard fintech conferences. We go to others. We just got back having some people go to Andreessen Horowitz and listen to what they have to say. I spent some time with the Wall Street Journal CIO forum, listen to what they have to say. And so we've got many different touch points where we collect that information to help shape the strategies that we put forth. So I do want to learn a little bit about where the future is for mm -hmm. LPL Financial and where the future is for you. So we're going to change things up and look ahead to what's in the future. Perfect. Let's go do that. Ladies and gentlemen, can Victor Fetter navigate to Fort Mill, South Carolina without GPS? <laughs> I think I can.
We're here in Fort Mill, South Carolina, checking out the new LPL financial facility that's under construction. So, Victor, I hope you can give me uh, what the nickel tour before it starts pouring. We're, we're glad to have you out here in uh, Fort Mill. It's our new home in the Carolinas. Uh, this will be home to about uh, 2,500 employees. It represents about 450,000 square feet of real estate. You see uh, here two buildings uh, that are going up, and uh, we aim to provide the, the best workspace for our employees. Um, out here in this facility, you'll have access to a lot of collaborative features in the workspace. Uh, you'll find a nice gym for employees, a healthcare facility, a uh, great cafeteria. Um, everything that we've become known for in some of our other facilities across the country will be brought here to the Carolinas. So this is certainly the future of LPL Financial. What do you think you have in store for the future from that technology perspective and the culture that you're trying to propagate yeah. among, the, among the environment? Yeah, I think this building is really a good metaphor on a couple different levels. I think one, it represents the growth that we see in the company. I think the other, it represents the level of investment that we're willing to make in our company and for behalf of our advisors. I think as it thinks about technology, you know, it represents a, a rich foundation. It represents a strong steel-based, if you will, set of capabilities that yeah. holds up an exciting platform for our advisors. You know, we've talked in the past that we're getting ready to launch in ClientWorks, and it's actually in the field with some of our advisors, and it represents the use of mobile capabilities and big data, and, and giving advisors what they need to really offer a compelling experience to their investors. And so whether it be that ClientWorks platform or the new investor portals that we're investing in, it's really all designed to, to make their business strong, to make it solid. Um, and so you put all that together, and I think the building here is representative of the same level of investments that we're making in technology um, here in our facilities for our employees. I, I think you're right. I see the metaphor with a good foundation, good structure here. With technology, with things being in the cloud, it's somewhat nebulous. It's not always easy to encapsulate that and think about how the foundation is there from a technology perspective. It is, and, and, and it's transitional. I mean, you have lots of assets that our advisors enjoy a lot of tools today. And we have to make sure that we protect those tools and make sure they're strong, but also transition in them to a very new experience, taking advantage of all those things that are available. So it could be cloud, it could be social, it could be data, whatever it may be. The mobile experience is very real in our environment. And so you, you have to have all those pieces while make sure you're providing a great service today. And so you see us doing is maintaining our footprint of those tools that we have today, at the same time investing strongly into the future. So keep our hard hats on, right? Because Absolutely. We've got a great future. Absolutely, a very strong future. <laughs> All right, fantastic. That's yeah, excellent. Likewise. I just enjoy this, being able to see it and get an inside look and, and some access as to what's in the future for LPL Financial. Well, we're glad to have you out here. Thanks for spending the morning yeah, with me. Thank you, it's been a pleasure. On the next episode of FP Pad Tech Tour. Okay, Anthony Valenti, he brought me a knight's hat. It's seven and five eighths. I have a six and seven eighths head. Let's see this. <laughs> yeah. It's a little big, Bill. <laughs>